Now today we are installing our timing chains on our FJ Cruiser. In fact, I just wrapped up the installation. Everything looks to be really good. So if you are doing this at home and the engine is still installed in your vehicle, this will be an excellent guide on how to do it at home. So let's grab our chain and because we're dealing with bank one, which is the right hand side again, I just want to deal with this guy, okay? These two dots, ignore, just ignore it. Brand new chain, yellow link, and you'll set it up squarely smack in the middle, okay? Now I may have to readjust this, actually, this will probably be more like this, hold on. Like this, okay? So smack in the middle. Now before I install this, and again I apologize, my light here is just acting up, but you see that little dot smack in the middle on my left hand here, and again right there on my right hand. And throughout the process off camera, I am using assembly lube. You don't want any dry starts, so you just want to coat everything with really either oil or assembly lube. Okay, let's see how this goes. Now there is a dowel pin on the end of the camshaft and you have an opening on the sprocket. So if you're worried about is it catching, see how much play we have and then once they mate up, it's solid. Okay, so that's what you're looking to do on this side. Now two things as I'm editing this video. The first thing, torque wrench, an absolute must. These cam fasteners are 74 foot-pounds and then we have a torque adapter. You'll see me use this throughout the film. These are really nice to have by the way. Very very accurate within 0.3 percent accuracy so I'll link everything in the description box below but let's keep going. Oh my burned your shoulder that's for sure. Here we go. Okay. Oh. oh boy, okay. And for the tensioner, this is the number two tensioner. I'll show you this little torque adapter set at 14 foot pounds. See how it beeps on you? That was 11.9. Thirteen point nine, perfect. And then we have a little pin on the bottom. Pull the pin. Okay, this is ready to go. And double check everything. So timing mark this line with this line. And then you have that dot. And again, that dot lines up with that guy. And you can triple check also by doing checking the links. The yellow link is smack in between this guy and smack in between that cap. And now for bank two, once again, we're looking at these markings on the rear of the sprocket. We used this guy for bank one, so ignore this. And now we're dealing with the two dots for bank two. Again, smack in the middle. Okay, and then you grab your cam sprocket for the exhaust, and that's going to go just like that. Okay. 
Okay. Now regarding these vertical lines, this will come into play when you install the main timing chain, but the notch on the bearing cap is in between these two lines. And also you have the yellow link and the notch is in between smack in the middle of the yellow link. Off to the exhaust side, that little dot is smack in the middle, lines up with the notch on the bearing cap. So this is why we're doing this job. Let's see how bad the timing chain has stretched. And you can clearly see, we do have a stretch. This little variation, that's all it takes. Super, super small, but we have to repair it, right? Now this is where it makes a difference. You have a yellow link and two orange links. You'll see this when we line everything up. But the reason why I'm pointing this out on your cheaper timing change, you can find some for like 20 or 30 bucks, which is insane. They won't have colored links or they may be black. You want, again, you want the factory stuff. It makes all the difference in the world. Now we could install the vibration dampers. Okay, same part number for both sides and they live right here. Now the dampers you don't want to install incorrectly. So these lips go toward the engine and that's the orientation that you're looking for. Okay, it just sits on the dowel pins here. Now what I'm doing before we install the main timing chain, great time to clean up the surface area. It's a lot of elbow grease. It takes a good 30, 40 minutes to really get everything nice and clean. But um, now is the time to do it. Now is the time to do it. The other thing is, it's inevitable. You will get some things in the oil pan here. So once everything is done, once everything is done, fresh oil, let the vehicle run, and then drain the oil, and again, fresh oil. Let me get something to drink here. And then we have a brand new crank sprocket. Now, of course, everything was set at top dead center before I started the job. And you'll find this little dot. This is essentially at roughly the nine o'clock position. There's a key, can only go on one way. Okay, see, it has to hit that key before it can really go on to its full point here. There we go, okay. And now we can install the number one, or the left-hand side, timing chain guide. There's really only one way this goes on, so you can't really screw it up. Now for the idler, there's a shaft with a dowel pin. The dowel sits right here in the engine, okay? And then you have an opening right here. The other side is completely flat. Flat side goes toward the engine, so it's something like this. Okay, this sits here like this. And once everything is installed, this will be tightened to 44 foot pounds and also a light coat of oil on the sprocket teeth. Okay, 45, that's good. Now for the timing chain, you have two orange marks. Okay, the orange marks you're going to place on the cam phasers and then the yellow is for the crankshaft so let me set everything up and i'll show you the way that you want this to align the yellow link remember this dot right here you're going to line that dead center okay and i'll come in with another camera when everything is done okay so you can see precisely how everything lines up so I removed the guide, gives me a little bit more working room, and you may have to slightly adjust and move the chain, but it looks like we're pretty much here. There we go. Okay. So everything is getting a little tight, and I'm reinstalling the dampers, but the lip, the lip here is catching the chain. So I'm trying to push this forward while inserting the damper and to make it easier I'm using a trim removal tool 
that way I can move the chain forward just a little bit without damaging anything. There we go. Okay, the main chain is a little tricky. The two smaller chains, quite easy, at least in my case, but the main chain, it's a little bit more finagling to get on the right way. Oh, that's not good. Great. Hey, hey, hey. Let's see if we can fish that out. There it is. Okay. So this is the last chain guide. Okay, it goes right here. And then I'll check the timing marks one more time here. And these are only seven foot pounds, so no need to really go crazy on these. So wrapping up here, I will rotate the engine one full revolution off camera. I just need to wrap this up because the battery is about to die here for both the camera and the light. So let me share with you the timing marks. So the orange link, you have the vertical line on the cam phaser that's smack in the middle of the orange link. And don't forget this guy here lines up with this section of the bearing cap and you have your dot on the sprocket here for the exhaust and that lines up with the little raised mark on the bearing cap over to bank two these two vertical lines line up like so on the orange link and these two vertical lines or I should say the raise the uh, little notch here on the bearing cap is smack in the middle of these two vertical lines once again you have the notch that lines up with the dot on the exhaust sprocket then come on down here, you have that dot on the crank. Here's another reference, and that has to be smack of the yellow link. So just double check everything, but uh, we're ready to really just put everything back together. So we are one step closer getting this FJ up and running. I sincerely hope you guys tune in and uh, watch as we start this thing for the first time. As always, thank you for watching.